Chapter 52 Close Personal Protection Who are you? Kieran shouts, which wakes Benny with a start. It is still dark. Kieran stands as a shadow, holding on to the doorframe, dizzy on his first attempt on his feet. He is also feeling the effect of the ship moving in the rough sea. I feel sick. His hand goes up to discover that his head is bandaged. He groans in agony. Benny is thinking fast, caught on the couch in his room, still in the same clothes as the night before, not that Kieran ever saw him then. My name's Benny. I'm your close personal protection detail, he says, sitting up. Just one of you? Yeah, you shouldn't be out of bed. It feels like it. It hurts. Can you come back later? I'm your guard. Really? No offense, but you were asleep. It's early. I was deputized. To sleep in my room? Exactly. I need to call Hunter and tell him you've woken up. Kieran is already dialing on the ship phone, on the adjacent desk. Hunter, I'm awake, Kieran says, then hangs up, not waiting for a reply. They got me a mobility thing? They think I'm a bloody cripple? Kieran struggles to say as he focuses on the empty scooter. Benny heaves himself up using his huge upper body strength to sit and swing his legs over. Nope, I'm the bloody cripple, Benny says with no malice. Sorry, man, Kieran is fast to add. No worries, I've been called worse, but they got your mobility scooter. It should arrive later. What? Until then, you're confined to bed. You have a list of broken bones. Yeah? How about the killer? The killer's like an artist. Every painting an artist does is a part of a self-portrait. And? The killer is painting a story of themselves. And? You got close to him but lived. He tried to kill you. He threw me over a balcony, Kieran remembers but he wants more answers. That's all I have, Benny says. Kieran feels a shot of pain and holds his head. There is a knock at the door. Benny drives over to it, watched by Kieran. Hunter stands in the door, holding it open. Morning, Benny. You want to go and freshen up? Sure. You're relieved. I've got this detail, he says, holding the door open for the scooter. Back soon, Kieran. Benny shouts. Eight o'clock, I'll order breakfast. The door closes. Back to bed, you. He's my close protection detail, Kieran asks. Don't underestimate him. He was paralyzed stopping a raid on a deli in Miami. What's going on? Kieran asks, sitting on his bed. Good news, you lived. Bad news, you got something wrong. Good news, I figured it out. And the not-so-good news, there's been another murder, and we've been relieved of our duty on ship. Ruby's back running the case? Worse news. She and her two buddies, Lau and Krishma, have been armed. What? How long was I out? A week? No, it's day six in the Pacific. What does that mean? How long have we been here? Kieran asks, laying down, confused by the timeline. As of this morning, we've been on three and a half days. I was out for a day and a half. And you lost the job. Did you fix our salary before we were demoted? Kieran asks, wincing with pain. No. Next time, agree on the fee and get us paid in advance. If there is a next job, Hunter straightens Kieran out on the comfortable double bed. Long as they don't take our sweets away. He is in sleeping position, in pain and exhausted from his first few moves. What's the damage? Hunter sits next to him. Broken pelvis, few ribs, lungs collapsed, but they sorted that out. And the head bandage, Kieran adds sinking deeper into the pillows. It saved you having whiplash. What did? 
your head hitting the floor. Stopped it whipping back and straining your neck. That could have been nasty. You know how many people in minor car injuries have whiplash and can never work again? Yeah. I was so lucky, huh? I just feel dizzy. And nauseous. Oh, I forgot. Cracked skull. What did I do wrong? You rolled on top of Ruby. I should have rolled on top of Ruby the night we were out, and I wouldn't have taken this hit. Kieran forces through his need to sleep. I think she called you with an offer, but you didn't pick up. Hunter grins. I was busy bleeding, I guess. The killer never rolled on top of Donna. Everyone else was strangled. She couldn't be. He would have been visible gaining the required purchase. He got lucky with the hat pin. That's like saying a center forward gets lucky when they score. He used the hat pin because it was second nature. Exactly. Second to strangling. And he never disturbed anyone, Kieran says, drifting. He's trying hard to follow. So, what is he doing? Reading the note, angry he hadn't left it with Eric as planned. The note is about homosexuality. Donna saw, and she died. Eric's gay? So glad you woke me up, bro, Kieran says, but he falls asleep. Dream about rolling on top of Ruby, buddy. Chapter 53. Gratification. The sun bursts through the sitting room window of Commander Phillips's suite. Benny in fresh clothes, Hunter, and a wide-awake Kieran are digging into a silver-service breakfast. Not only is there an incredible selection of food, but a private butler to serve and order anything that might be missing. Kieran is in shorts and a shirt, revealing heavy bandaging to his lower torso. He refills his plate. His appetite is back. Talk screens on all the bodies are clear, so it's unlikely to be Ruby's theory of drugs. I still fancy sex, Hunter says. I don't think I'm up to it, Kieran says, but maybe after I've eaten. You guys are funny, Benny says. Yeah, it comes from all this time working together, Hunter growls with sarcasm. It shows. How long is it? Benny asks. Ten. Ten years? Wow! Weeks, Kieran interjects. Ten. Awfully long weeks. Five weeks ago, I took a bullet for him. Now this. The butler opens the door for Lau. It is good to see you up, Kieran, Lau says. Both men notice the gun in a closed pouch on Lau's belt. Lau, could we get all the evidence in here and make this the evidence room? Kieran is the least mobile. I don't know, sir. Great, I'll send Benny, and you can load him up. This might not take long. Great, I'll let head office know how helpful you've been. Lau goes out again, with the amused Benny following. If I go through the boards in detail with Dwight and make him a friend, Kieran suggests, maybe I can rescue this gig. Tell me more about sex. Oh, if only your parents had been more proactive. Yeah. So, you are working on the usual psychological gratification motive of a serial killer. Yeah, the Lawrence character, the cottagin, the male victims. The women being... Mistakes, witnesses, intrusions, accidents. Okay, do we need a psychologist to go through guest and crew profiles? We don't have the manpower, time or experience to do it, Hunter suggests. But it's not drugs. And like most serial killings, it is looking like a sexual theme. Even if there is no sexual contact, the profile normally results in uncontrollable anger and eventual death. There are often elements of thrill-seeking, challenges, and attention-seeking. We have all that. I sent all that to Dwight Ritter last night, and we haven't managed to contact him since. Let's hope that's not because he's been told we're off the case. Kieran says. Not yet. Killings will show similarities in execution and a pattern to the locations. 
Serial killers are often hard to find because they look and act just like those around them, often being close to the investigation. Like the overhelpful school caretaker Ian Huntley in the British Sower Murders. You read that from a library book while I was sleeping. Online. What's the point of a library when a ship has Wi-Fi? I was worried about Benny's enthusiasm, so I profiled him top to bottom. Good. Was that after or before you had him sleep in my room? The phone rings. Morning, guys. It's Dwight Ritter. Good morning. Are we on or off the case? Very much on, and we need to talk more often. Copy that. You're on to something, but I'm still running to catch up, is the very merry but direct voice from Miami. We need to build new boards in Kieran's room. Glad you're back with us, but you only got hit because you're too close, Phillips. First name's Dwight, and it's a pleasure to still be alive. I'm with you there, down my own time on the edge. Now, the homosexual angle must be followed. In any murder, the body is your most important evidence. Check the back doors. Sure, Hunter agrees. It's time to exclude and include. Ruby's wars were a good start, but we're way beyond them now. She won't be pleased, Kieran says. You weren't sent there to make buddies, Dwight says. And the captain's a suspect? Until we exclude him. And that we is me, if it gets uncomfortable for you. It is good to have you on board, Mr. Ritter. <laughs>